designed to bring you your very own private lesson from the top competitors with as much detail as possible. My name is Paul Cole and I'm a second degree black belt from Five Rings Grappling Academy in Mansfield and Sheffield. You can check us out at fiveringsbjj.com. Each episode, I intend to bring you the inside information of what is going on by watching a match with a competitor and breaking it down with them for you. Today, we have the Yorkshire gripper, Mr. Lloyd Cooper from Combat Bay School, going over his match from Grapplefest 1 with the great Bryn Jenkins. With that, let's roll. Match from Grapplefest 1, was it? Grapplefest yeah. 1? Yeah, against Bryn. Um, what sort of training had you done leading up to it? Because Bryn's obviously uh, you know fairly well known. I knew, I've known Bryn for, for years, you know, he's quite a reserved guy, but um, I think the first major comp I did at Purple Belt was 820. That was like all the eight um, Purple Belts, um, under 80 kilos from around the UK and Ireland. So it was kind of like an early who's who of that, you know, like the current uh, mm -hmm. stable of guys, you know, like Marcus Field and Sean McDonough. Um, and people like that. I was in that tournament and Brim won that. And you know what I mean? He, he looked extremely convincing. So he's been around for a long time. He's very reserved. He, you know, he, he's not, he's not uh, your typical athlete pu pushing himself on social media. He's, he's building his gym's brand and stuff. But so I knew he was a really, really good competitor. Um, I think, you know, we're trying to build the team in goal. Um, we're not as big, not as, as deep in terms of talent on the mat in goal. So I, I felt like a lot of pressure in terms of training. So, you know, I knew it was going to be a tough match. I, I, I accepted it straight away. I had not fought Bryn before. Um, so, you know, I think really, I don't tend to structure my training too much in terms of what my opponent can do. Like, I'll have a cursory look, you know, before matches, see what they do. Like, I knew Bryn was really good on, um, like, passing, knee cutting and things like that. So I knew that would be a, definitely be a factor uh, that I'd have to keep tight. But really, I try to focus... It, if I know they're a good opponent, it tends to just drive my level of training a little bit higher. You know, I mean, I'll push that a little bit harder. Um, but the, I suppose if I had to do anything, anything for specificity, um, it'd be watching watching the gaps between my knees because um, and you'll see in the match actually he did hit a pass off that his ability to change directions from like one side to a knee cut to other is is exceptional. Um, and it's and it's it would just get taking care of like the laxity in my knees and stuff like that. Um, between some of my hip switches. That's one thing I did, I did try to work on before the match. So um, it, it really interesting matches. And I think if you look at, like, let's say, my later career or the last couple of years since this point, this was a, this was a little bit of a turning point for me. This, it really made me realise, you know, even though we've got a small team in goal and, you know what I mean, we're not in the middle of London with 200 guys in the mat. If you train the right way you train hard and you do the correct things, you can actually still achieve a really good outcome. Do you know what I mean? So it was a bit of a, a mental game changer for me, this one it really was. Yeah, I was, um, I was on the mat when Braulio was brown belt getting ready for the pans and he'd just moved over to the UK and he had whites and blues to get ready. And he submitted, I think seven opponents in about four and a half minutes because he just, got everyone to kill him. He put himself in really, really bad positions and just fought his way out. Technically, he, was all, you know, he wasn't going to um, really lose anything, but it was more the, the fight that he got. He just got people to smash him, really. Yeah. So absolutely, I think, I think you did the right thing, the way that you structured your training. I definitely think there's a lot in that, you know. Um... It's very easy as soon as you get to a certain level of progression that you can, you know you can dictate how most roles go, unless you're very honest and open with yourself. You know you'll find yourself destroying everybody all night, getting twenty subs a night, going out feeling like a champion, but you didn't, you've not actually done a great deal for for your mental performance. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think true growth comes when you when you're feeling that level of adversity in the gym or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And you've got to be a very strong man individual to, to choose to put yourself in these positions. You know what I mean? It's absolutely, it can be very easy to, to come in and just be like, oh, I'm not, I know which roles are good. I'm going to pick those and I'm not really going to get tapped, especially, you know, people always ask me, oh, what, what's it like to be a black belt? Is it cool? I'm like, no, because the target on your back is ever bigger. You know, I've not had a single role that has been nice since I've been a black belt because everyone's trying to kill you. But on the same, so, it could be easy to slip into the game plan of, right, I'm just going to muller everybody, just keep them at arm's distance. But 
you're not still learning as a result of that. You know what I mean? So you, I'm, especially in my training, I tend to let people get quite deep on stuff, especially like leg locks and heel hooks, get, get them locked up, and then I'll start to mount my defense. You know what I mean? Let it go later than it would. Because then that'll replicate potentially higher level opponents that I might face are actually getting me in these positions. Then I've, then I've got to work my, my way out. Yeah. So I think, you know. No, no. Sorry, go on. Go on. So, what were you saying? Sorry. I just think if there's one piece of advice that for anybody, especially if you're not in a super stacked gym or if you find yourself drifting towards the top of the pack is look for ways to get, to get yourself challenged. And, you know, like you say, is getting absolutely mullered in bad positions or allowing people to get to the bad positions and then really try and work, work through it. Okay. Well, let's get, um, I think that's great advice. Absolutely great advice. And anyone can follow it. That's, that's the main thing, you know, whether there's guys that are the king of the blue belts, um, or, or the guys that are running the gyms themselves, it, it's really, really good advice. It's taking the ego out of it, which, People say there's no ego in jiu-jitsu. I think there has to be, obviously, because you're competing. Um, <laughs> but, but definitely it's, it's taking that step back and, and seeing um, that things are training rather than, you know, you're training for something. So to do that, you have to be bad at it to start with. Definitely. Yeah. You know, like, I think the ego is an interesting one because if you ask me, Mrs., do I have an ego? She'd say, yeah, an outrageous one. You know what I mean? So, and I, and I definitely do not like to lose. I'm extremely competitive. Having said that, I remember when Gary Tonin said something like, I'm tapping 15 times a night. And if you're not tapping, that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, and I was like, right, you know what I mean? I, I really get where he's coming from there. You know what I mean? Because you're not experimenting. You're operating within your, your zone of comfort all the time or your zone of control, let's say. And I think the... Um, I can't remember seeing it. It might have been an Osho quote or something like that. And he was talking about like a snail or something like that, or um, yeah, probably a snail. But it was like, look, it it lives within a certain size shell. It is it's a set period. Okay, so it grows. It you know it has a comfortable life. It grows until it starts to to fill up that shell. And when it starts to get you know quite tight within the shell, it experiences pain and discomfort. So. And when it starts to feel the pain and discomfort, it realizes it needs to move on to do something different. So then it leaves the shell, it goes away and finds a different shell and inhabits a bigger one. But then the, the basic element of that is the catalyst for growth is being at the like, edge of your limits or your, yeah. your you know, discomfort. discomfort zone. So actually, when you start to push yourself there, that's when you're going you're gonna to retain a higher level. Yeah, it's the, there's no growth within your comfort zone sort of principle, isn't it? Definitely. Okay. Right. So the little jumps is a, is a mental set for me. So that's, that's, you see all my matches, I'll do that jump. That's getting myself. Your anchor. So yeah. Just pause for you one sec. So I always um, pull, um, again, it's no secret. I think anybody who's studied my games, I always pull right hip down. Mm -hmm. um, so you see, I, I'm trying to feed my right leg in, in deep for the half guard there. Uh, yeah. The moment I'm, I'm, yeah. So the gap between my heel and my and like the rest of my Achilles and Bryn's leg is a bit of a problem. So uh, I'll look in a moment. I should start to extract that. So you see, Bryn, he knew I was going to try and leg lock him. So throughout this match, he was sitting extremely heavy with great <laughs> posture. Yeah, so he keeps his ankles little, together close. Yeah. You know, and to be fair, in terms of like anti leg lock game, cool. So there, I'm starting to extract, and I'm and I'm trying to flick out my left leg to get a little bit of lift there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm starting to rotate so, out. So you're saying, um, just one second, that the space between your heel and the the pit of his knee is an issue for you right now. Yes, because that means that my knee is too deep within his legs so if you okay. imagine that's between Bryn's legs okay yeah if my leg is there's, there's a gap you know here to the re, um to the rest of his leg my knees mm -hmm. in range of, of his uh both thighs so he can clamp of course okay? yeah it's really really so my range is wrong um in this position so where i should have been in this position here is my toes locking onto his um his lower leg okay yeah hooking the same way that um craig jones and 
Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. And so then my knee would be shallow out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was very good at doing that. So then I, I was forced to elevate quite heavily there. Go back mm -hmm. half a step. So, so because I realized my knee was very, very deep, um, and again, I was in danger. So if, if at that point he's, if he clamps his legs up, he's got one hip controlled. So then the next logical step from having my hip controlled is, is forward pressure to, to control my body. Yeah, the, the staple into the floor, the cross face. Absolutely. Um, so, you know what I mean? In terms of layers of defense, you know, both knees and hips, I've given, I've given two layers up there on one side, knee mm -hmm. and then the hip. And all I've got left is my right hand. So then to counter that, I, I was really, I really needed to lift very aggressively here. Um, so with the, the butterfly hook, which is great. So that, that like half butterfly guard is a bit of a get out of jail free. So if you crap with your bottom leg, at the very least, you can be very aggressive with like a paddle lift. Yeah, um, and with them and then driving one, forward, it makes track. it a bit easier as well, I would have thought. 100%, yeah. So if he loads on that as well, you know, if, he, if he's trying to keep weight forward into me, the, the butterfly hook I've put in, it's very easy for me to tip weight over. Mm -hmm. And then what I wanted, the, the entire game plan for this, was trying to get under the leg you can see here, is this. to try and get under that. So if we can get, yeah. Okay. So, so luckily, no, I got into this position, but he, he, he notices what I'm doing straight away. So the next couple of frames, he, um, you see I, I get underneath, but then he'll, he'll quickly start to get his knee out of the way. Okay, so we'll go. Actually, I think we've put... Yeah, see how he's dropping his, his yeah. knee now? He realises yes. I was trying to hook underneath. He's dropping his knees. And again, really good point, you know, not just for my performance, but look at Bryn's toes. Yeah, they're active. He's engaged. Yeah, so, you know, that's one thing I really drive a lot of guys is, like, get on your toes because if you imagine, if you imagine your posture when you just sat on your heels, your back... As soon as you engage your toes, your hips are squared. You, you've got the, um, you've engaged all your, your chain at the back, your hamstrings, your butt. So you know what I mean. If I try to load him, he can here. He could push his hips forward. So you know, yeah. Because as you can see, my posture here is butterfly guard, but it is all about pulling Bryn forward. With this hand, I'm trying to see where the ah. There we go. So um, I think so. With this hand here. Yes. Get off that colour. So this hand here is the one that's obviously looking to pull him forwards um, and with your posture. And then what you're saying is uh, Bryn being on his toes yep. here is going to allow him to send his hips forward, effectively sprawling through the pull. Yeah, it's like a rather than, you know, everyone's sort of traditional sprawl is face down. But if I'm going to be loading towards me, all he's going to do is engage his hips forwards because that, that's going to take some of the, uh, the power out of my load. Um, you know, and, and the traditional way of loading is rolling back and pulling. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've, I've tried to do the opposite. I've scooted my bum inwards, so I'm super yeah. tight. But still, his, the toes really, really made it difficult for me to load his weight here. So okay. I might get his head moving forward, but it's very unsuccessful. Okay, let's, uh, if I close this, and we'll keep going. I'm very impressed with your Zoom skills anyway. Thanks, I've been uh, working on it. I'm, a, I'm now a blue belt. There we go. So you see how I tried the load, didn't work. He was able to scoot his left leg back out and he's re-pummeling for central position. And all the time, you see, I was trying to uh, split my legs, his yep. left arm in position. So right again, on the toes. Yeah, and a lot. This is where he's looking for his knee cut. Okay, so if he can, if he can spread my legs, he can. He's pummeling his legs inside. So if he occupies that inner space, he's got he's, um, he's got free reign. Then, so you can see here, Bryn's left knee. Um, he he could here. almost he could he could knee cut to the left hand side of the frame. Uh -huh. I am very heavily engaged onto my right hip, so that will be difficult at this point. Yeah, is your right arm tucked in, so effectively hiding the, the floor? Yeah, I'm trying to kill the space at this yeah. point. So if you was to start knee cutting to my, to my right, um, again, I'm blocked on that side. So at the least, I'm in a defensive posture. But all the time, he's trying to pummel inside. So the, the fight that's going off here is me trying to clear um, his hand off my foot, and then I want, you're going to see I'm going to start pummeling my left, uh, my left foot in at this point. Okay, so 
need to figure out a way to get YouTube. Uh, space bar, maybe? No, Ooh. it's not working, unfortunately. There you go. Left leg came in. Uh, he's heavily engaged. I'm trying to make distance. So look, and then a shrimp away. And that was, that was the toes that you were talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, so look, again, he's on his toes. But you see how he's gripping my heel? Yeah. Um, to be fair, I'm sure there's a way on YouTube you can do half speed. There yes, there is. Yeah. Let me stop this first. So. There we go. Yeah, let's go with that. So look, and now I was too close, so I shrimped out. Again, the they're the toes that you were talking about, right? That's it. That's exactly the position. So now my knee is uh, it's difficult to see, but my knee was farther away that he couldn't clamp on. Mm -hmm. Affect it in front of his hip, like a, a frame in itself. Yeah, 100%. So now um, I realized the half butterfly wasn't working very well at this point. So we're a minute into the fight. Um, I was playing the bottom half guard with the butterfly hook in. But again, as you've seen, he's been very good at pushing out and clearing and stuff like that. So this is when I tried to go to Z guard. I didn't feel like the risk for me with Z guard here is if you see, look at the back of my thigh, there's the gap there. So the smash pass is always prevalent in versus Z guard. So this gap. Yes, exactly. So I, that is an inherent risk of playing this guard, and it's not something I tend to do often. But the, I guess the, the greater context is, is that, look, he knew I wanted to leg lock him. So therefore, he didn't want to allow his, his forward posture to, uh, to have his posture compromised in a forward fashion. So therefore, I know he's never going to commit too heavy to the pass. He's, he's going to be more likely to speed pass as opposed to pressure pass. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that leaving that gap open is probably less of a risk um, in this position because I know he's not going to commit too heavily onto it. But now, by playing this, I can keep his, his near side hip at distance by extending my hip. So then I'm focusing my activity with my upper body on grip fighting on the far side. Yeah, yeah. that's a question that I was going to ask. Um, so, shall I keep going? Yeah, okay, let's go for it. Okay. So a lot of leg lockers will play the two-on-one grip on yep. the, uh, the far wrist. Craig Jones, again, is, is a favourite at it. Eddie Cummings would play two-on-one constantly. And like I know that square up, it's to get the arm over the shoulder. Do you want to go over yeah, something here? Yeah, go back a little bit. See, the thing is, I'm, I'm trying, he's, he's so good at shutting down a lot of my games. So you see the active post he's got on my hip there. There. Yes, yeah, so that's again that's stopping my ability to get like any sort of distance change. Um, and the key for me, like in leg locks, is how can I use my legs and my upper body posture, but actually to get underneath him sufficiently. And obviously, by stapling my hip in that position, he's precluding me from doing that. So really, I'm I'm um, altering between far grips, two on ones, to try and circle him for to bait the underhook. So. In terms of, uh, you'll see in a moment, I've tried to play a deep underhook, but it was only a bit of a feint to clear out the hip. Um, again, you're going to play this, that kind of old school half guard game. You, the, really, the end point for that is you, you're coming up and wrestling up or you're going to you head under for deep arse. But what I really wanted was that far side because if, I could, if he's already leaning into this side and I can uh, get the two on, a sufficient two-on-one grip, that's when I get the posture break I require. Okay. So, all of this is centered around, really, I want to get a good plant of his hands onto the floor. And as you can see, Bryn is really aggressively keeping his hands on me as much as he possibly can. Look, that, that for me was a feint. So now you see I drop the leg out. I'm trying to, to allow myself to get closer underneath him. He's keeping me at distance, so I have to re-establish the knee shield. He's so got a oh, really. he was in control of your wrist there as well, wasn't he? Yeah, because again, it, so he was trying to shove that down and away because, yeah, you see here, so exactly. Because he knows my left hand at this point, I'm trying to get this, uh, get his hand low to his, um, his knee. But then un fundamentally, my left hand would be trying to fire underneath his kneecap on the second side. Mm. Okay. So try the two on one, but again, as soon as he sees me going for that, he keeps circling it out. So again, I'm trying to bait the half, the half guard, trying to shoot in. Now I'm switching now to butterfly double unders. 
I'm not having much joy either side um, with any elevation attempt. So then I'm circling back out. But you see, go back half a step, see what he did here. Now, this is where the game started to change and I realised I got an opportunity. So, butterfly, as we're, as we're rolling through, he back steps hard off his left, circling inside. There. Do you see Bryn's left leg is now inside my kneecap, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you'll oh, see his, any leg lock. That's his foot, isn't it? Yeah, so if you imagine that's my uh, right leg, Bryn's mm -hmm. brought his toes and he's hooking yeah. inside. Yeah. yeah. So, again, the, the one thing you, you're told by any, like, Dan or her guys, and who, whoever occupies the inner space is obviously going to win that battle. So, he'd actually took his, his leg pummeling game up one level here. So, up till this point, he's been knees on the ground, toes engaged. But then he's actually circled inside now. So, in theory, he's completely keeping my... Uh, if you look at my right knee at this point... Yeah. It's... As I mentioned earlier... If I allowed my right toes to be too far off his leg, my knee's in range and he can get over the top. But actually, by playing that hook, he's completely cut out that leg. So he's even further up my body than, than yeah. before. So this is, um, let's say, the beginning of the end in terms of him passing me in a couple of minutes because he's changed the game and I've not adjusted properly yet. But I realised that my half butterfly and underhook game, because he was playing the hooks, had to change at this point. Okay. So this really brought me, caught me by surprise. And it's not something that I'd had done to me too much in the gym. Okay. Boom. Exactly. And again, yeah, that knee cut. You know, and I think this fight gets a lot of press because it's, you know, there's a good finish by me, but actually the performance Bryn did was, um, it's really impressive. So that just... give me back up probably like five, six seconds for that whole sequence. And again, it's re this is a really good way of passing. So I'm in butterfly. I'll elevate. He back steps over left. So we just yep back steps back, over yeah, back steps. Oh, and so that that there. was the the switch. Right. He's completely changed the game here. You know what I mean? This there so, and. And if there's ever an argument for not adjusting quickly enough, this is it. And he passes me from it because he changed the game at this point. Up till now, it was me playing half guard uh, with the butterfly hook in, him toes down. He changed the game. Look, I start to lift with my left hook. He changes yeah. direction. With the underhook and the cross face. Perfect. Absolutely perfect in terms of the pass. Look, I've got a very weak quarter guard he's heavy forward pressure i'm playing the dick move pushing him in the in the throat <laughs> but look it, it's done there. at this point you see so you've got bodies. the half guard there the frame here this is sort of your leg configuration needs to be the opposite way doesn't it to keep that foot um yeah he that was a lot went into that past didn't it it, it really caught me by surprise. Like I said, just the game-changing element of switching from knees down, toes engaged to um, hook inside the leg. It was really impressive. And that, and that, to be fair, this pass is something that I've built into my own game as a result. I think in the last last couple of years, this is the only time I've been passing competition. Mm -hmm. So, because um, this was another thing um, I was going to ask is... Um, he gets through and then you go to bridge out. Was that with the intention um, of coming out this way? Yeah, kind of. And to be fair, it was a little bit half arsed. Like, uh, by the time he'd got me, you know, um, over under control, he'd got my hips to the floor, even with quarterback. I knew the pass was there. So, especially from a sub only point of view, I weren't, I wasn't invested in in fighting that too much at this point so for me what i wanted to do is try and create as much twisting angle as possible um so my you you'll see we start to rotate a little bit but i think again probably caught me a little bit surprised it was half fast attempt so there so now very keen for me at this point rather than being flat being flat is to be dead at this point here okay so you see how Bryn's trying to squash me down um 
I'm talking some crap in his ear. I'm going to say there was something being said because you were both laughing. I was going to ask. Um, no, it, it just, I think I said something like, um, I fucking knew you'd get that knee. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. So, it, it, and he laughed. But look, so you see what I'm trying to do here, right? Is I'm trying to curve up my body as much as possible. If I'm flat, then I'm dead. So you see, look what I'm doing with my left knee. I'm trying to bring my knee up very, very heavy. But actually, so then I've, I, one thing I always talk about is a build up a kinetic energy, right? Is if I had to at this point, I could aggressively flop backwards and I can do some kind of a movement. That's going to mm-hmm. create, you know, as a catalyst. If I'm flat, I'm static. I've got yeah, nothing. there's no explosive movement really. Not without okay. your feet being it's on the floor. Pure strength. So here, at least I've given myself an option where if I want to move or shrimp, I've got at least, I don't know, underneath my head, the, the eight inches underneath my head that I could flop backward and start to move. So what I'm trying to do as well is butt scoot backwards sufficiently so I can actually get my left leg back inside at this point. Was, so, it, I mean, was it ever in mind to turtle and use this hand like to block the, the uh, threading hook or not at all? Yeah, definitely. The, for me, I guess I've got two options. Either I turn back to face him and go flat or I continue the roll out. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, more of a critique on myself. The times when I tend to do that escape, I get my back taken. Um, and I really, really, and I, and I know Bryn finishes, he's got a high finishing yeah. rate. From the back. Um, so I didn't want to do a full um, commitment to my knees at this point. So that was, that was the worry. So for me here and now, it's about just creating enough space so I can actually create a little bit of a scramble. Keep going. So now. What I'll do, I might just turn it up to 75. 0.75, should I say? Okay, so look, I'm trying to shoot. I, I, I realized, so if we go back half a step. So this is what I talk about, like the build up of kinetic energy. So as, you, um, as I've, I've got my, my body quite circular at this point, I'm not flat. So in theory, I can then rotate inwards. So my body would go from facing, I don't know if this is going to work when you play it back, but facing this way, I can mm-hmm. start a rotation. That will create space between me and Bryn. And then I'm going to use my knees at this point to start to um, exploit some of that gap. Yeah. A heavy turn in, old school, but look, I'm now bridging. Yeah. I mean, this, it, it's old school, day one white belt stuff, but, you know, I've, I've created space. I'm shrimping under. Now, as I've got to that position, I'm making the space See. where I've got the heavy post with my arms there. Yeah. So that – and. That's what I'm, I mean when I am talk, talk to my guys about kinetic energy. Is give myself enough of a build-up that when I do want to move, I can quickly get my uh, frames in place. So if I'd, if I'd have gone flat there, I wouldn't have been in a position. I would have been flat and tried to turn. There would have been no space yeah. available for me to actually get these arms in. The only reason this worked is because I'd sat up very heavy straight away. So let's go back to that. That's the um, the start of you getting your guard back. Yeah. So well, I'm, at I'm, least have the ability to point your knees towards him. Definitely. Well, I'm, I'm on my side. Now I'm starting to make my escape. Heavy twist, but look, push. I've made enough space. And you see I'm, now I'm heavily rotating my knees into that gap. Mm-hmm. You know what? The ideal would be getting my feet in, but at the very least, I just want to get contacts with my shin on his upper body yeah. because then once I've got that upper body contact, I can then move my head out of the way and I can reset like we did there. So now, um, I think I've realised at this point, I was like, right, I need to watch out for that, um, that second hook coming in because that's, that's his way to pass. I, I need to be really, really careful. So I think right leg engages, trying to go um, deep half again. They're not deep half, so half butterfly. Look, and he's backing up. So this was, that interested me because he went to his knee. That's something he hadn't done before, yeah? I was like, okay. So This, in, this yeah, knee here. Is his left knee. So what I was looking for here, again, usually. Sorry, his left knee. This yeah, one. Yeah, so watch. He, he brings this one up. Okay. The people tend to have a preference on which one they're going to keep down. So there. So look, that says to me, he wants to knee cut me with his left leg. Mm-hmm. You know, the last time wasn't a fluke. That's what he's going to try and do again. So he's going to, 
he's going to start to rotate that one. If, if anything, he's staying heavy down on his right side. He's going to pummel with his left and use that to pass. Yeah, there, going that way. So, and that suggests to me, from a leg locking point of view, I need to stay right hip down because the his left side or my right side is going to be lighter. Therefore, I can get underneath it better. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I'm engaging back in very heavily, right leg down. Good shot on my tricep there, by the way. Oh, yeah, one second. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get a proper one. I'll cut that, yes. working out. That's yoga for jiu-jitsu, that, isn't it? <laughs> it's all those kettlebells I've seen you doing on Instagram. Jesus Christ. I've not, I've there never... it was again. <laughs> okay. But look, this, this was really, really interesting. I was like, wow, he's actually giving me the knee this time. So I think he, his level of confidence had gone up since he passed me, you know what I mean? So he was willing to uh, go for more. So look, he's stepping inside. So now, mm -hmm. okay, you've given me that leg. Let's try reverse De La Hiva at this point. So he's still keeping the leg up. Again, and you've, you've still got the strong frame there. Yeah. So it was interesting because I don't know whether he'd, he'd intentionally done that, but as he stepped his left leg forward, I was like, okay, I've now got an opportunity to try a guard I've not done yet. Because here... You see, you see this huge amount of space between um, his, like his groin and then the inside of his leg. So actually, let's go reverse De La Hiva because that's an easier way of off-balancing here. This what space I want to do, here. And this space here. Yes. Because now if I get my left leg into position and I can start to invert, I know I can load his, his weight at this point. Which so is there. Mm. You, you start to see, obviously, if we look at uh, our angles at the beginning, the parallel, and I start to try and move my head to more of a perpendicular position. I'm trying to force my head deep underneath. So, under that space there. And my left leg being in the reverse, the more I can kick it out to the right, the more I'm going to compromise his base, which will allow me to get deep underneath. So, sorry. Uh, your left leg is kicking him out in that direction. Exactly. So you see how Bryn's upper body is now bracing it in that way because that's the, the direction of movement is that way. Whereas I'm doing exactly the opposite with my upper body. I'm trying to move left. So then I, the more I can elongate his body in a, like a horizontal fashion, it allows me to get deeper underneath. But again, he's, he's gone heavy. So now I'm trying to kick back inside. I go to Z guard, extending away. I realize the reverse till he was gone. He's dropped his knee, keeping the distance. He's dropped his knee, but not fully. No. His knee isn't fully on the floor, is it? Is that causing you any issues? Would it have been easier if his knee had have been on the floor? Um, not so much, really, because it, I guess it's kind of a halfway position. It didn't concern me there. Uh, to be fair, I'm, I'm struggling to see the benefit of him having it, hovering it between because he's, he's, his base isn't fantastic at that point. So look, I think he's already he's trying to look for uh, hooks. So I go to a traditional half guard. As we start to move this frame through, he's, he's pushing my foot again, but you'll see he's going to look for the second hook in. He's lifting his leg. So I have to uh, reestablish a traditional half guard just to keep that out of the way. You've got shin on shin there as well. What I yes. just saw that was interesting was um, the amount of um, credit you gave him for being on his toes earlier and for the explosive movement that it would give him. And if you watch this spin here, he's not actually on his toes and he doesn't, he's not on his toes throughout any of it. Like he's sliding around there, which is allowing you to establish the hook to yeah. get that hook yeah so i think and again the only thing I, i'm i'm presuming but i think the reason for that is he's had, he'd had that level of success in making the pass early you know what i mean by bringing the second hook in so my, i was trying to play the shin to, again to forward load him so now i was trying to go super heavy i've got a 
I'm quite in, in risk at this point, actually, so I wouldn't advise doing any of this. If we go back a couple of frames, I've it's dug in my right uh, hook very, very deep at this point. I've got a deep underhook here. So again, I'm trying to almost butterfly lift um, my right foot over. But again, back to the point I made right at the beginning, look at my left leg here. I know it's covered up by the timer. It's so, so deep. Uh, my my foot is sticking out probably about that much. And again, it's not the way I should have been doing things. I should have been clamping onto his bottom leg so I can compromise completely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Should have been clamping on with that foot and giving no gap so then I could at least completely exploit that leg. I can lift the hip, but also I can keep the foot in position, which will allow him to tilt more. Okay. Uh, one thing he does again in a second is is um, here. There you is he, go. he finds that pummel again, doesn't he? That inside space. This is on the opposite side to which he passed me. Mm -hmm. So look, I go, I go straight back to butterfly. Realize he's trying to do that, so I switch sides to try and counter that hook he's got, and I'm trying to make distance and pummel my left leg in to reset the position. But you see how heavy he is on this left side as a result of that. Yeah, his his base essentially is in between. This is his baseline, isn't it, across here? So this triangle is where his base is, making his right leg as light as it's going to be because this left hand is is at its heaviest right now. Yeah, so uh, and I think by this point it started to click so that I'd, I'd realised he'd changed his tact in terms of passing and it, the advantage the, the hooking gives you in terms of uh, direction change but for the knee cut, but actually he's doing half of the job for me in terms of compromising his base. I mean, it started the fight, it was very upright, very square and because of, he's wanting to get a, a knee cut again, he's, he's almost taking... He's, he's, compromising his base by 45 degrees here yeah so, with his head being here rather than sort of there yep 100 percent. so now i start to realize okay so i'm not going to get a, a you know a beautiful lift get underneath i need to start looking at exploiting the fact that he's off center and starting to so actually what i uh, wanted before we get to the knee crush was i wanted to start looking just towards the toes and pulling out like laterally at this point that's what you see my hands down there if i could have dove inside i'd have got his heel and start to pull it towards me these toes yeah so so bringing the knee across this line here going yeah. almost belly down to control this yeah, because, because he's like heavy on that side his his reaction time in, in his or his ability to be able to like get his leg free is, is going to be reduced because his weight's on it so if I can get my, my right hand here down onto his heel, I can start to pull that towards me and that will further break his base. That's very Craig Jones style, like getting the heel, pulling it towards you. Yeah. So again, he stays heavy. I'm going to two on one. Back into the same game we've been doing most of the time. And this two on one in this position right here is for what purpose? So I'm trying to keep his arm in. So what um, I was hoping to do, so I'm playing a knee shield at this point, a Z guard. So if I can keep that nice and tight, if I can drop that leg out and then I can start to pull that over the top of me, then I'm going to be able to get uh, enough um, of an entry underneath. It, would you be pulling his hand in this direction? Yes. Yeah, 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 definitely. At the minute his elbows into my, my thigh, um, which is almost like a bit of a base for him. So I'm going to do a, do a pummel um, and then obviously the, the removal of my thigh underneath is going to cause his upper body to drop. So look, thigh starts to move, trying to pull, miss that. There we go. Z-guard, I'm kind of running out of ideas now, but I'm realising that he's allowing me to get his base over onto his, onto his side really heavy so all my traditional game had gone at this point i'd you know getting underneath trying to lift but the one thing i did start to realize is he's, he's very off center 
So had the game plan into this fight been the, the ankle or the heel? So again, most of my fights, and again, there's no secret, yeah. I'm going to try and pull guard, I'm going to try and load you up underneath and get into your legs. Um, the, the game plan here actually was, um, if I can't leg lock him um, in terms of getting underneath, is actually to start um, sweeping later on into the fight. But actually, so that the, the key was at five minute mark, is if, if I have no look from the bottom, is get on top and start to pass. Um, so one thing I just noticed was here you that's you stretching your arm out and putting your head under have you got the z guard still the z guard or have you you've not gone to half butterfly yet so, have you? Half step. So, so that is, is again is a is a massive massive risk yeah because the guillotine what what that would do is if he'd let go of that to go to the neck but then obviously would give you the arm free to the elevate face. up yeah so it was a calculated risk it wasn't just sort of because if he'd have gone to the head I could have either swept or at the very least his weight's then on the floor forwards so yeah. it's almost a bait at this point but the beauty of that is if he does wrap my head and I've still got the knee shield in I can start to extend my lower back I can create enough pressure away so I can start to power back out of it mm -hmm. look he's squaring up and he's now thinking so you see how he's hovering his right leg he's now thinking about circling again So at some point he's going, to, he's going to start to pummel back inside, staying heavy. So he wants, he really, really wants a leg inside at this point. He just tried it with his with his um, right leg. Yeah, and he set up the cross face, thinking, "Well, now as soon as I get the the hook, I'm I'm passed again." Yeah. So if he's got that, he can pummel. He realizes he can get it. He can then look. He's you see how it go back there. He almost hovered for it. Then if he'd have had the leg, it'd, it'd have gone for the knee cut again. So. Here he will be trying to get his far leg back inside. He hovers the hips. This he leg or this leg, sorry? So the leg we can't see, Bryn's left at this point. This. Yes. So if he'd have had the hook in at that point, he's already posting it uh, on the floor in anticipation of it because those posts are going to allow him to change, is what allow him to change direction real quick. So... I'm realizing that at this point, so that's why I'm doing a very, very heavy lift to, to create, uh, to kick him away from me at this point. Lift, extend away, realize I'm in danger, kick away. So now this is the beginning of the end, I think. So look, reset, let's make distance. I'm back to, um, back to the square one, but He's, he's now increasing in confidence with, with realising he can, he can um, lift his, hover his hips and he can get that second leg and he knows that's the way to pass and he's still trying to do that. So then he starts to, um, again, he's hovering that up. So he's keeping that left leg loose. So we, if he needs to, and I start to lift, here we go. So I'll come in, see, see, see that? Yeah. Exactly. So let's go back like four or five seconds just to the start of the encounter. So as he starts to, uh, I think maybe just before this. He's on his toe. There you go. See how he's raising that knee already? Yeah. Left knee is lighter here. So he knows I'm going to try and engage right hip down. Okay. But he's, he's giving himself that option again. He, that's the pass he wants. He wants the leg hook and he wants the knee cut facing the screen towards us on my left hip. Mm -hmm. so, so again in this direction. Yeah. Nice. So again, he goes in, he's, but this time he's, he's successful at doing it. But what I'd already thought by this point is how can I really exploit that? He's, he's going to be heavy then on his left leg. So he comes in, I go deep, look, boom, straight away. I'm trying to go for my Z guard. He, he's then engaged. So if my leg's like that, his toes are in at this point. But look at, look at Bryn's base on his right knee. As soon as, he, as soon as he gets established with that left leg in, his right knee becomes light. Boom. See that? Yeah. That, that means to me, his base is heavily over there. So this knee is light. His yes. base is all the way in this direction. Nice. So now I go, I triple down on trying to move my base in towards that direction. So look, I'm, I'm throwing my right arm inside. See that? Mm-hmm. 
but then I'm, I throw my leg in into position. And this was the... Yeah, so as he's over, I've, I've started to uh, scoot my... Uh, that's a perfect shot, actually. I've scooted my upper body down because he's so heavy. So the base is there. Yes. But that's allowed me see my hand in position. I've gone around his knee and come uphill. Mm -hmm. And he's, his leg is in this space here? Yes. Nice. So now, once I've got that arm in position, I've, I've locked it. In, in effect, if he wants to retain the hook inside my thigh, I've locked it into position. He, can't, he now can't start to pummel his knee back out by me holding that. And so then the next thing for me to do is my left leg is, okay, um, has to go across. So I was in Z guard. So now I'm starting to push off his hip at this position. So I'm maintaining the, I'm maintaining the, the bend in his knee. The but foot. I'm him, yes. I'm so him off the balance. your foot is in the hip here and this hand um, is in a RNC grip behind his knee pit. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So heavy push with my left leg just to keep his base off me. Push, so I made the distance now. That's, that got my hips sufficiently far away. Did he actually pull your leg across there? Let's go, I think what he was trying to do, like the thing he was doing most of the fight was trying to pull the knee to try and clear the foot out. So if, it, so here you see uh, his hands in position, what he's, he'd been doing most of the fight was pulling the kneecap. However, because I got my foot into position, I don't think he'd probably realise I'd changed my foot positioning from outside into Z guard onto the onto his belly. Mm -hmm. So when you say pull, you're you're talking about this hand here, and are you um, saying to pull it past him or to pull it open? Uh, he's he's trying to clear my so pull it past so if he if he okay. pulls my knee sufficiently down my foot disappears into it yeah into a, a standard half guard almost and then he can start to raise his right knee up yeah. to come to a near side cut this time mm -hmm. okay so, so you're gonna go for half speed at this point uh, i am in half speed all ah, right <laughs> oops uh, one second um we can go slower then. All right, okay, cool. So, here we go. I've established the arm. I did a little shove with the shin. I get my foot to the hip. I do a further push. That gets me enough space now. You see how his body's far enough away from me and my hips that I can actually rotate my left leg at this point. So, this is in the perfect position for you or what you would deem it to be the perfect position. Um, his, his base is here. You've got a frame here, a frame here, and a wedge there. Yes. So there's a lot going on in this. The bottom one for me is if, I guess, if I'd have not done that, if I'd have not controlled Bryn's bottom leg with my right foot there, he'd have been at liberty really to just extend his leg straight. And then it had changed the base completely. So as much as it, as it had been far over, it mm. could have started to um, angle his base somewhat different. Yeah, here, it, the hip could have hit the floor and it'd be in a sort of pigeon pose. Yeah, kind of, definitely. But the, the fact that I'm keeping that tight and I'm pushing him over, he's almost, he's almost leaning backwards and to the left. Mm -hmm. So his, the leg I'm attacking is the forward most point in it, of his body at this point. This. Yes. Okay. Which is typically for uh, from a leg locking point of view, doesn't happen very often. You know, it's usually their arms, the, the yeah. upper body, the hips, and then their legs that last. Yeah, you've usually got to get past all of this, haven't you, to get to what you Definitely. Want. So I've been able to actually, by pushing his hips, pushing and trapping that bottom leg, actually get one leg furthest forward and in, in, into, into range for attack. Heavy push, my arm's in position. Now I'm sliding very, very heavy my left leg across here. So I get the triangle. Now, see how I'm rotating my head across? You can the see that. This, right? There's some gritted teeth going on there. So th 
the, the one thing a lot of people mess up is they try and finish it on the side that you set it up. But the, the, the way to get this, the finish on this is if Bryn's toes stay on the floor, you won't get the finish. So if I try, once I've locked up here, watch Bryn's toes slide into my butt cheek, but look, and then it's very difficult because it's shadowy. But as I rotate to my left, I make Bryn's feet airborne. You see how I'm raising my hips? Go, you see the little gap from uh, the floor? So look, Bryn's toes are on the mat. Yeah. Um, toes are on the mat there. So the, the, the big mistake is people lock it up on that side and keep the toes in the mat. But if his toes in the mat, he can exert force in the floor and stand up. Mm-hmm. Feet across, make the triangle. Now, I'm already moving my head out of position. I squared up his base, but here it's still difficult to finish in this position because it is square. It can, it can almost stand if you needed to, and it, and it was able to really get his right leg out. It could stand up and pressure out. So that, then my rotation is extremely heavy, twisting inside. So now, see how I'm pushing my hips off the floor? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it was designed to happen, but the shin locks into my butt crack at this point, and me raising the hips makes his toes come off the mat. So you see I'm pushing it extremely heavy. Look how high off the floor Bryn's feet, feet are now. Yeah, so that's about a foot off the floor. Yeah. Maybe. And you've just got a standard gable grip there uh, with your hands. No, I think I had... Um, I can't... I, 100% can't remember, but what I'm trying to do is turn the blade of my wrist directly behind the kneecap. So you know a lot of catch wrestlers talking about the blade on, yeah. on the, the bony bit of your wrist. I'm trying to keep that slicing through his knee, and I think I was either maybe over grip or it might have been a gable. I'm not 100% sure, but my appetite was to try and really slice through his knee at this point. Okay, there's a... Cool. Yeah, so heavy rotation. But look, I've really started to push my um, hips to the sky at this point. The more my hips are airborne, the more compression in his leg I can get. Your thumb is pointing in that direction so that the blade of your forearm yeah. is coming into the knee. It, to be fair, it does look like a standard gable. To be fair. Yeah, but you've still got the way that you said, you're still pulling it in deep. Yeah. So I often get asked what I say to him here. And I, all I said is tap, because what I'd, I'd heard is his, his patellar ligament started to like pop a little bit. Oh, okay. So, you know, and that's an, an interesting thing for me. Like, usually in competition, I will just, I'll go for it 100%. Either they tap or something breaks or whatever. Um and I, like I said, I have a lot of respect for Bryn and I um, and did at this point. And it was, and it, it was something I had to try and like understand afterwards why, you know, I knew I, I knew I got it, but it was very unlike me to, let's say, hold the move somewhat and say, oh, you tap. Um, and at the time, like I say, so I tap, he shook his head. Um, so then I continued to raise my hips and, and I heard a, a really good pop at that point. Okay, so let's watch it at full speed from the, the starting of the... Uh the chain of movement because there was a lot went on in that 20 seconds so we're under again got the foot he pummels and then yeah it looks like he pulls your ankle across his and then yeah and that was it and i remember him because i was sat and there's the scream obviously um I was actually sat throughout all of this. No, no, oh, nice. Maya had fought this competition. Um, ah, okay, okay. So, um, I am um, there. That's me. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> so even though I wasn't Matt's side, I, well, I was Matt's side. I wasn't judging as I normally do. Um, at Grapple Fest, which I love doing because of matches like this, I get to watch as close as as I could be. Um, sometimes I'm closer than the camera is, which is incredible. 
Um, yeah, but for this one, that's me sat there. Maya had just won. I think she fought Sophie Keenan in the first match. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if we go back to here again, so you've got. Yeah, this is the last reset now, sitting up. He raises his left knee. I think it's the last one. He starts he, to come in with the left knee up. He's, yeah. He's getting ready to pummel that leg in. I realise I give him half guard. Now, heavy extension over, much loads of distance, and a lock up. Heavy rotation inside, bridge my hips to the sky, and get the little crack from the knee. Douchebag level 10 celebration. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw you do it um, in person on Densetsu. Uh, oh, do you remember? Let's go, champ. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one. Didn't you propose to Livy? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was incredible. That was amazing. I didn't give her the chance to say yes or no because I dragged her on stage and just yeah, everyone was... <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, that, that was a good one. It's very much evolved over the years. Yeah. Um, so, oh. yeah, a great, a great match from figure think, four on Grapple Fest. I definitely think from both perspectives, though, like... You know, everyone. A lot of people ask me what one of my favourite matches is, and this is one of them. And it's not just because, you know, it's remembered for a good, the rare submission. But actually, I think Bryn's performance was was really, really good and really sharp at this point. And you know, he shut a lot of stuff down. He was changing strategies throughout throughout the match, and it forced me to adapt. You know, what I mean, it forced me to to hit a move that I'd only, you know, messed around with a few times in the gym. Um, so test and again. A lot of respect and testament to, to Bryn on this one, um, you know, and it just it just came lucky that I I managed to get a, a fancy submission off the back of it. I guess uh, it was a great performance by both of you, very very good, um, and a real key insight into everything that was going on, which was exactly what I wanted from the channel. So thank you very much. No worries. Um, have you got any? Um, I know that you've got obviously the knee crush instructional coming out. Yes. That's through who's that through? Talk combat about. media. So www.combat-media.com. Um, so we're actually going to hold, not release it immediately because it's probably a bad time to release an instructional. Is when nobody's training at all. I think the novelty of instructionals is worn off. So we're going to wait until we realise lockdowns in a position where we can get back training. We're going to release it at that point. Um, so I'm going to price it really, really competitively as well. Um, Yorkshire prices. Yorkshire price. Yorkshire submissions at Yorkshire prices. <laughs> but it's not just the knee crush. So there's a little series on knee crush in there. And I didn't just want to do heel hooks because that's what everybody's doing. So I'm actually showing like counter to heel hooks and reattacks and stuff like that in there. So there's a little bit of a mishmash of everything. So the, the last one was on straight foot locks. This is a bit more of my weird and wonderful um, attacks and recounters. So in other, a lot of my other matches, I think I'll let people attack my legs now because it's easier then to, to catch. Um, so I think that, that that change in my game came at Polaris um, when I got brutally submitted by Kieran Davin. Um, I had not trained any leg lock defense at that point. It, you know, after then set, so I was like, nobody knows leg locks, I'll be fine. He submitted me very convincingly. So actually then I worked on defense to the point where I feel comfortable letting people attack my legs, but then I've really worked a lot on recountering at that, and that's when you can catch people out pretty good. So, and th this next one's a little bit of a mish mishmash. I'm still debating on the title, actually. Okay. I think um, the one <coughs> I've thrown about was lock snapping two broken knees. Like <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that on your Instagram this morning. What's your Instagram? Uh, at Yorkshire Gripper. Yorkshire Gripper. And have you got any fan pages on Facebook or anything like no, that? No, no, I'm not pretentious enough to have a fan page. Any uh, no. YouTube channel yourself? I know that you used to post a lot of... Um, I did actually, yeah. So I have got it, um, I, I think it's just Lloyd Cooper. And I am in the next coming months going to start to dust that off again. Um, but Perfect. more like long... So I think what I've done in the last couple of years is just Instagram, one minute videos, very diluted, very punchy. Um, but... I'm actually going to get a little bit back into when we're back in the gym, doing a bit more long form. So I'm going to dust my, my YouTube channel off because I did stuff at Purple Belt when I had a blog page. Um, obviously, I'm 
busiest person on earth, but when I'm just going to start getting people to film some of the classes I do in the gym and I'm going to drop them online. So oh, brilliant. it might be worth in a couple of months checking that out. But for a lot of my jiu-jitsu stuff, just check out my Instagram at Yorkshire Gripper. Okay. And any sponsors that you want to give a shout out to? Of course. Um, so Scramble Brand always looked after me um, for the last couple of years. Um, as you see in the video at the end, excess mouth guards. Um, really, really have looked after me. So um, local, you know, one man band in Doncaster, but does some of the best mouth guards out there. Yoga for BJJ. I, I think I'd be broken if it wasn't for those guys over the years. It's a great. Um, and I've, um, actually, I'm being looked after by a, an outdoors company at the moment because I'm doing a lot of walking. So Holland's Country Clothing as well. Okay, um, I saw that on your story as well this morning. Yeah. No, so that they're, they're just uh, sending me some kit because I'm I'm trying to. I think one thing I like to talk about, I guess, is the mental health aspect of competing. Um, and I'm concerned in the future I'm not going to be able to compete as much anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm trying to think of things that I need to occupy my brain with because that's not something, you know, being a competitor or is not something you switch off. I don't think that it's going to be easy to just transition to just training and, and teaching as much. I, I'm going to find that a struggle. So I'm trying to find other adventures I can get into and walking, mountaineering. So, and um, that they've, you know, been kind of to send me some kit. Um, so I'm going to try and get out and do a couple of mountains later in the year. And what was, the, what were they called? Sorry. Holland's country clothing. Okay, perfect. So when you see me on Mount Everest in two years. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Pushing uh, Aunt Middleton out of the way. <laughs> I think if I went to do uh, Mount Everest, I don't. I think Libby would probably leave me. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, you've got two kids to think of. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely die. That would just be my luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Lloyd, thank you very much for coming on, giving such a, a detailed, awesome breakdown. Uh, combat hyphen media. dot co. dot uk. Uh, I think dot com. Dot com. Okay. I'll put links in the, the description and things, but you've already got the aggressive straight footlocks instructional out. Yeah. Um, so well, if you like straight footlocks, check that out. Um, yeah. That's my highest percentage over the years. So, yeah. And it's obviously allowable at all at belt levels. Yeah. I have attended and hosted uh, seminars with you and always learned a lot. So thank you for that. I've had private lessons with you. Um, and again, always learned a lot. So anyone that's watching that can, I would definitely, definitely recommend you for classes, um, seminars and private lessons. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the, I think we had a good hour, hour at it. Um, but again, I think what you're doing is a, a great idea and a good niche. So keep it up. Looking forward yep. to the rest of them. Thank you. So there we have it, an absolutely fantastic breakdown from the man himself, Lloyd Cooper. You can follow him on Instagram at Yorkshire Gripper. You can follow him on YouTube, Lloyd Cooper. He said in the video that he was going to be putting out some classes and instructional videos. Definitely check those out um, and look in the show description for his links to his sponsors. Okay, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and keep up to date with the breakdowns that we'll be putting out.